Hey everybody, welcome to Burratech. In this episode, we're gonna be asking the question, should you use emojis in programming? All right, welcome back. Before we start this video, I wanna make sure that you like and subscribe. The more likes and subscribers we get, the more content we can make. All right, should you use emojis in your programming? Well, this is a question that surprisingly has been somewhat answered. Believe it or not, you can actually use emojis as variable names and as function names in certain languages. Now, these languages include Java, JavaScript, and Swift. Now, the most notable language that can use these emojis is obviously Swift. So years ago, Apple released a version of Swift in which you could use emojis as variable names or as function names. And this, of course, made everybody laugh out loud. But believe it or not, I actually think that people are going to start using emojis in this manner more and more. So this also humorously touches on the fact that we might be going full circle from hieroglyphics to writing languages and all the way back to hieroglyphics. But nevertheless, everyone has been using emojis more and more in their text, and even we have been using it here at Mammoth Interactive for promotional materials, which you can check out here. So it makes sense that you might be able to see these emojis in coding languages in the future. Now there's actually a whole language dedicated to just emojis, and I think that's quite funny. But is it funny or is it an actual trend of things to come? Now, as a person who learned a Western language, we have letters that make syllables, that form words, that form sentences. And I didn't grow up in a language where a word can be an entire character. And this is really important because 140 characters on Twitter in English can only convey so much information. 140 characters in Chinese can convey a lot more information. And the reason is, is that a character can be a word or it can be an entire concept. So the idea of having just one character being a concept or a word gives a lot more density to a lot less space. And this is something that's really good because one of the things about coding is that it is very verbose, meaning that there is a lot of space. If you were to condense that space or make things pop out a bit more, I think it would be a huge productivity time saver. So let's say you needed to have a function and this function took a picture. Well, you could just have the function name be a camera. And when you're going through the code, the camera emoji will pop up amongst other text. Also, you could use emojis to highlight certain functions over others, analogous to the underscore. Except certain functions and certain emojis will make the code much easier to read. So is there really difference from using an emoji versus an underscore? Well, to the computer, it's not really that much of a difference because an emoji is just a Unicode character. And a Unicode character is the same for the letter J or an underscore as the smiley face emoji. Of course, this can make your programming look really cute, maybe disgustingly cute if you put smiley faces all over your code. The point is, is that if you don't overuse the emoji, it could be a very powerful tool to make your code a lot more readable and a lot more fun to actually read. So this is something I think people at Apple really understood well. And they understood that if you could use emojis in some way, shape, or form, your code would be a lot easier to read and you can use it as tags to make your code more readable. And believe it or not, in the future, it might be the most productive way to make sure that your code is more efficient. Because if something raises the efficiency of coding, no matter what it is, then coders will definitely do that. Now you can gain efficiency in two ways. You can either make yourself more efficient or you can reduce waste. And that is reducing the frustration of a project or reducing inefficiencies. Now, I think using emojis, this will absolutely happen. You'll be reducing the inefficiency of your code. You'll be making your code a lot more readable. Instead of just using the same text, you'll have emojis pop up here and there. Now, as long as you don't overuse them, I think it's a really good idea. So the question is, is will people accept this? Well, I think that if certain languages like Swift and JavaScript and Java use them, then you might be able to see them in a lot more languages going forward. And the reason for this is that if it works out in one language, it will slowly permeate to other languages. 
Furthermore, not every emoji is available on all platforms. There are certain emojis that are available on some and not on others. So what would have to happen is that there would have to be a standard amount of emojis that you could use across most coding platforms, which means there needs to be some kind of standardization. If there was some kind of standardization, then I think it would be a really good thing to adopt this. Now, personally, I don't use emojis in my code. Yet, the other thing that you need to understand is that there are always new coders coming up. There are people that are maybe eight or 10 years old right now, and in 10 years, they will have a job programming. And these are the kind of people that will most likely be using emojis. Since younger people are already accustomed to using emojis, there's no reason why they can't put it in a function name or a variable name or whatever. So this is one thing that you have to remember is that young people will ultimately change the way things are done. And in this case, I think it will absolutely happen as young people get older. So I think in the next five to 10 years, you will see a lot more emojis in coding languages. And you'll come back to this video and realize that I was one of the first people to talk about it. On that note, that concludes this video. I want to know your opinions in the comments below. Will emojis become more prevalent in coding languages? I certainly think they will. Now remember that this channel doesn't do a Patreon and said we sell our digital products down below. The more money we get from the products that you buy below, the more content we can make. If you really like this channel, you can subscribe to Mammoth Interactive's huge library of content. We have everything from iOS tutorials to machine learning tutorials to game development tutorials and much more. We release 20 to 60 hours of fresh new content per month. And if you really like this channel, you can subscribe monthly or yearly. We have both options. Our goal is to get to 10,000 monthly subscribers. Thanks for listening and I'll see you in another video.